Frank, are you there? Frank, did we lose you? Did Frank drop off? No, hang on. Let me see. I'm here. Okay, there you are. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong one to mute. Sorry about that, Frank. Okay, thank you. That's all right. That's all right. Probably meant to be, Terry. Uh, Okay, so I'm starting with a state on positive law, Article 99 on 1-7. So I'm going to read this uh, through, and then I'm going to sort of give a bit of explanation as we go. So Canon 1269, starting with a state. A state also known as elodium, is a fictional concept first created from Latin during the reign of Henry VIII of England through statutes concerning wills and abuses and the Cesc V Act of 1540 to describe the artificial creation of a trust corpus of a temporary testamentary trust, also known as a Cesc V trust, upon one or more presumptions. Hence the word estate is derived from two Latin words, e, statuo, literally meaning by virtue of decree, statute or judgment. Okay, let me go through some of those because there are some dramatic differences in what people may have read or heard before. When you look up the definition of a state, the Latin word that is most, almost always used as a second component isn't the word statuo, it's the word status. And of course, if you look up status, you find the word is standing. Uh, you know, it, 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 there is in fact a number, I'll just pull up my little book here. There's a number of definitions to status. Um, the most common, as I say, is self-reference when it says status or standing. Um, and never do you normally see the word statuo as the reference. So yeah, posture, attitude, position, standing, status, circumstances, situation, state, form of government. So status. That makes perfect sense. The problem is, <clears throat> if it's called e-status, it doesn't, it's fairly benign. It doesn't really tell you much about the purpose of the word estate. Now, the other issue about the word estate is it is, in fact, referenced several times in the King James Bible. It is referenced in Scripture. So, again, those that created the executive letter are correct that the word is or word comes from Scripture. The problem, however, and this is a key problem, is that when you read the specific sections where the word estate is in fact the translation in English, it doesn't make sense. Words like higher estate, lower estate. Now, I'm blessed to have a number of people that are working with us that have gone back and looked at some of the concordance in the translation to see what the um, non-English version relates to. And what they've found is that in at least several occasions, I'm not saying every occasion, but in several occasions, it appears the word e-state has been incorrectly used instead of a better word that more accurately determines the translation. Now, why would they do this? Why would they use the word e-state instead of house? Why would they use the word e-state instead of inheritance? Now, that requires people to go away and see for themselves, and I hope they do. So I'm not denying the word exists in Scripture, and I'm not denying uh, the, the validity of that reference but I'm saying that the translations appear to be at odds with the most appropriate words. Well, maybe, maybe. It is because this word, this concept, is an integral part of what was created at this time in 1540 and beyond. Because if you look at a word that is equally valid to status, as potentially the root of uh, the Latin using statuo, then what you get is a specific, logical, sensible meaning 
for the word estate, being by virtue of decree, statute or judgment. In other words, an artificial trust, an artificial corpus, I should say, an artificial corpus. And that's precisely what happens with a SESTA KV. Exactly what happens with a SESTA KV. Well, let's move on and see if, if we can get some better understanding on this. 1270. The word estate is equivalent to trust corpus, except the state specifically and always defines a trust corpus created by an artificial means through SESTA KV trust rather than by the operation of will through vow, oath and agreement by two living beings. The state cannot be used to describe the trust corpus of a living trust or natural testamentary trust. Now, let me use the current legal system as proof of some of that. When you read case law, what you find is that the state, the word estate, is denied having legal personality. And the state has no legal personality. A trust is recognised as having legal personality and the trust corpus, the corporation, is recognised as having legal personality, but a state is not. Well, that gives us a clue. Why? Why wouldn't a state be recognised itself as having legal personality? unless it is describing a type of trust corpus and now after use has literally been used now to hide the type of trust corpus rather than the trust corpus itself. Well, then it makes sense. So when we say state, we're saying, well, this is a trust corpus created by virtue of decree, statute or judgment. Now that legal maxim makes complete sense. Let's think about that too. You know, a trust is created without any paperwork as easily as, as I saying to one of you, here's my car, here's the keys, can you please mind it and use it? You're happy to use it. You say yes, well, I've granted it to you, you've accepted the role of trustee, we've created a trust. It's that simple. Or I could say to one of you, uh, here's a list of all my property, I've got some terminal disease. Uh, when I die, would you mind mining it and using it and, and, and helping it for the family? You say, yes, well, we've created a, a testamentary trust. But when a SESTA KV trust is created, as I hope all of you now are aware, it's not created because we're involved at all. It's created by statute, by constitution, by administrative act, without us having any role involved at all. It's fu fully artificial. Well, by virtue of decree, statute or judgment. It makes perfect sense. Okay. Canon 1271. Unlike a normal testamentary trust, an estate through a SESTA KV trust may come into existence without the need for the grant or known as the testator to be deceased. Okay. Now let's keep going. Canon 1272. The granting of benefits from an estate to beneficiaries is at the discretion of the trustees of a SESTA KV trust, known as the executors, also called executives, appointed by the trustees in accordance with the terms of the deed and will of the estate. A beneficiary of an estate is always the same as a beneficiary of a SESTA KV trust. Now, let's, let's talk a bit about that. Part of the confusion over the last few weeks is the role of trustee, the role of executor, the role of administrator. And what we're saying here is a trust, of course, being a trust, has a trustee. And unfortunately, in the discussion of executor in the letter, the, the fact that we're talking about a SESTA KV trust and a trust, the role of the trustee has not necessarily been clearly mapped out. The other problem has been, of course, the relationship between the executor and the trustee. So what we're saying here is all trusts are administered by trustees, but the role of executor is a separate role and usually below the trustees. And in the, in the, in the SESTA KV, of course, the difference between a, a natural testamentary trust and a SESTA KV trust is the appointment 
of the executor by the trustees. Now, let's go to Canon 1276 where we actually explain this. Unlike a perpetual and natural testamentary trust, like the one I said, uh, I'm about to die, here's my will, will you, uh, will you administer? Yes, I'm appointing you executor and trustee and you off you go. Or I, I nominate an executor and then some other group become the trustees. So unlike a perpetual and natural testamentary trust, whereby the testator nominates the office of executor under a Sesta KV trust, it is the trustees who hold sole power to appoint the office of executor to themselves or another to administer an estate. Okay, that's important. Very important. A normal testamentary trust, we as a testator control who the executor can be. But if it's an artificial corpus, it's a test of KV, it is the trustees who hold the power to appoint the executor and no one else. No one else. Okay, next point. A person who seeks to usurp the trustees and unlawfully claim the office of executor without permission is known as an executor de son tort and may be charged with fraud. If you go to the trustees of a Sesta KV and say, I am the executor, and they do not consent, then you are known as an executor de son tort and you have committed a fraud. So if you're sending off letters and the trustees have not granted you the role of being executor, then you are committing a fraud, an indictable fraud. And you may well, if not certainly, be charged unless you can quickly regain some resemblance of competence. Well, can we ever be the executor? Well, they do, in fact, make us an executor in court cases. So I'm about to show you how twisted our friends of the bar are. And if you really want to be the executor, think about the consequences. So I'm about to switch to Article 119, 119 sign. That is Article 119 sign uh, of 1-7, O&E-7.org, dash dash positive law. And I'm going to read one of these. Canon 1449. A signature within the operation of Sesta KV trusts is also known as an execution. That's the origin of seeing the sign, an execution. And when we get signed, sealed and delivered, it's an execution. Whereby a document prepared by a trustee and duly signed therefore appoints the beneficiary temporarily as executor, assuming all associated liabilities and penalty. In such circumstances, where the trustee is a judge and the beneficiary the defendant, a signature upon any document prepared by the trustee or an administrator denotes the execution of any sentence by the beneficiary as the executor upon themselves. They get us to sign the warrant that condemns us, are the orders that condemn us. We sign and condemn ourselves. How? Because when we sign, we are, in fact, appointed the executor. We, appoint, we are appointed the executor. The trustees permit us to be appointed executor. The judge gives the order, unsigned. We sign it. And so we agree to go to prison for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And prisons are full of executors. You want to be an executor? Go right ahead. Because guess what? Prisons are full of executives executing and administering the liabilities of the trust they agreed and signed. Now it's perverse, it's evil, but ignorance is not going to solve the problem. And certainly when people manipulate any of us and claim scripture, and claim it's evil, and these people are Satan, and don't listen, they're Jesuits. 
and throw all kinds of spanners in the work, that kind